Hello, hello, hello. I just wanted to record the video because this is something that I'm quite excited about. Um, so I was looking through Blender version 2.92, uh, which is not this version right here. Um, it is still in alpha, um, and I'll show you how to get it in just a second. But while I was looking through it, I noticed that they've incorporated a thing called geometry nodes. And in short, it's basically a, like a start for Blender uh, to become truly parametric and somewhat catch up uh, in that regard to Rhino with Grasshopper and Houdini. Um, so this is super, you know, just, just having one more member to, to the family, a free member for that is, is super exciting. So just to jump in and just to show you what I've found, and I guess there's plenty of videos about it already, but this one is mine. Um, so just to show you what I found, I will first of all show you how to download the alpha version. So just in Blender, oh, that's a nice song. <laughs> So just in blender.org, uh, in, in the web website, if you scroll down, so you don't download the 2.91, this is the like a stable release, you download the alpha. So you need to scroll, no you don't need to scroll down, I'm sorry, you need to go to download, click there, and then instead of 2.91, you scroll down and you find this go experimental portion of the site where you click on download blender experimental which will open up this website here where you will have the possibility to download blender 2.92.0 alpha for windows for mac os or for linux right a uh, nice little thing is if you're a student and you want to use blender on a school's computer but the school's computers don't let you install any programs you can't use the stable releases because those come with uh, installers. But what you can do is you can download the freaking alpha because this is just a zip file. So once you download it, you just click on it, it downloads. It's going to download the zip file, you extract it, and you will see something like this. It's kind of a file uh, root system. So then you just run this Blender app and you're good to go. All right, so there we go. So now it's loaded up. It, for some reason it takes a while for on, on my computer for it to load up. Maybe it's because it's not installed, but just extracted, I don't know. Either way, now it's on. I can see that it's 2.92. Um, it asks me which settings would I like to use. I just click out of it. And as per usual, A, to select everything, delete to delete everything. So we start with a completely, completely blank page. So just um, to show you those geometry nodes and how they work, I will need to actually expand this bottom area here, and I will create a one. Uh, I will create a partition here. So I will split this window into two, and I can do that by hovering my mouse on this. A meeting point between the two, um, two or, or rather three windows right here and dragging it to the side like that. Right. So now I have my window uh, or, or my viewport, my uh, animation keyframe thingy, forgot timeline, right? Then the name is timeline. <laughs> And also I have another timeline, so I'll just need to change this one to geometry node window. And that's easy. I just click on this icon right here, element type, and I just choose geometry node editor. Apparently it's shift F3 as a shortcut. So I click that and we're good to go. Okay, so now in geometry node editor, if I just uh, try to add anything, so in Blender you add things with Shift A, right? So if I try Shift A and add any nodes, I can't because everything is super grayed out. And that's because I don't have any geometry on which I, I could add the, the nodes, the information. So I need to do that first. So let's, let's see. Um, 
in Rhino, <laughs> this is not Rhino, this is Blender. Um, in Blender, Shift A, and let's create. Um, what are we gonna do? <laughs> are we? Let, let, let's do some cubes on a plane, parametrically pyramid, driven cubes on a plane, right? So we will need a plane like that. And maybe it should be a bit bigger, so let me just scale it up to like three, enter. Um, so that's good. Maybe even bigger. Two more. Like that. Object, apply, all transforms. I never remember how to apply all transforms uh, with shortcuts. Either way, we have our, our, our plane, shift A, we make a cube. And I'll just move that cube, G, X, to the side, so that it's not too much in the way. And perhaps I will... Eh, for now, let's leave it as a cube, but later I will probably do something with it. And one last thing is Shift A, this point cloud system. So this is a new thing in, 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 in Blender, this point cloud system. I believe it's a new thing, I don't, I'm not sure. But this is something that uh, will be, we will be using our geometry nodes on this point cloud system and we will be using the, 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 the plane as well as the cube as inputs into the point cloud system. You'll see what I mean in just a second. So this is our point clouds, and they are just floating in space, doing nothing. If I check their uh, settings, it's just basically radius is a float, position is a vector. Uh, no, no settings whatsoever. I believe you can add a material to it, but we don't want to. But you can add a modifier to it, which we do want to. And that modifier is going to be called geometry nodes. Right? That's the modifier. So I will add that modifier here to this uh, point cloud system. And now you can see that as long as I have it selected, or not even that, select, as long as I have it selected, I can see geometry nodes here and it, they are pretty small. Let me make it, make it bigger like that. There we go. Something like this, zoom in. So just basically geometry input, geometry goes in, geometry output, geometry goes out. So it's straight up. Uh, it's just basically um, the geometry that you have is being outputted. If I disconnect this, bam, the point cloud display at least is gone. It's not being calculated, it's still an object, right? I can still see it in the list, but it's not being calculated. Alright, so now what I want to do is I want to, let me actually reconnect it, I want to take this point cloud, right, and I want to put it on the surface, on this plane here. By the way, when I select the plane you can see that the nodes are gone because this is a separate object with separate node system attached to it, right? So this point cloud needs to be placed on this plane. Let's do that. Um, first of all, I need to reference in this plane, right? Or do I? Let's see, let's see what kind of uh, nodes we can use. So Shift A in the node system editor, Shift A. So there are attributes. Um, it's, it's basically um, variables that you can attach to different objects. Uh, then you have color, we don't care about color, you have geometry, boolean join, transform, that's great, we will be using trans transform, I believe. Uh, then you have input, object info, random float, value, that's great. Uh, you have mesh, point, point distribute, point instance, Th these are important ones. And you have utilities, um, where it's just basic, it's basically just math stuff. Vector, also math stuff, and grouping and layout is just um, visual. It's, it's to introduce visual clarity to your node system, right? So, so they don't do anything with the geometry. So for now, let me just, uh, just give me a second. 
All right, so let's make this point cloud follow the plane and then place all of these boxes uh, or rather this box on every point that's following the plane and also somehow introduce control over the scale of these boxes and while we're doing that I will kind of talk about or rather you will probably just notice the current limitations of this add-on and it's understandable given its age you know it's still in the in the alpha so of course the functionality is not not there yet so uh, to start with we select this thing right we select this box uh, full of points and we see that group input and group output are connected right so if uh, I just disconnect it it's gone yeah yada yada the counterintuitive thing is we don't do anything with group input in this case because we're currently in already inside of the point cloud guts let's say the core of, of a point cloud meaning that we don't really care about the group input that much what we do care about is referencing referencing in the plane inside of this point cloud inside of this node system and we can do that with either shift a or add um, and, uh, or clicking on this add button and then going to input object info or as I mentioned before shift a input object info like that and then I can click on this pipette tool and click on this plane here like so so now it gets referenced in and it's not just the plane that gets referenced in as geometry but also its scale its rotation and its location which might also be useful later on. So now, how do we get those points or that point cloud on the plane? Well, a node that does that, Shift A, is called a point distribute, this thing right here. And point distribute node asks us for geometry, uh, for density and additional information for not additional information but <clears throat> if you would like to add additional attributes to density um, to how density is read uh, then you can through density attribute right here but basically all I need to do is just connect geometry to geometry and then of course the output geometry <clears throat> from point distribute needs to be connected to group outputs to actually see the preview and you can see that now points are following and if I increase the, the density, the amount of points increases. That's great. Okay, so what's next? Next up, uh, we need to take this box and put it on every single point here, right? So for that, I will be using a node that's called uh, something with instance, point instance, I think. Let's see, shift A. Input, no, not input, sorry, it's under point, point instance. There we go. This guy right here. I'll just uh, drop, drag and drop it here. Connect geometry to geometry, geometry to geometry. Also, a uh, nice thing about Blender, if you just drag your nodes on the wires, it will automatically connect. But I'm gonna show you the next node. So now nothing happens. That's because the object here is not set right so we need to actually say that the object for point instancing is the cube so again pipette tool select the cube bada bing bada boom that's it right that's our uh, cube on every on every point i can have more or less of them for now let's have less right just cubes we'll make them nicer uh, so now let's see how we can introduce um, control over, let's say, the scale. Let's say the scale of them. So you would think that, well, there is this transform. So search uh, transform, this transform tool here, which would work, right? If, if I want to change the scale for these cubes, I can just do it with transform. But the problem is that if I use the transform here and I just scale them, you can see that all of them scale as a group. And for some reason, Z doesn't even work. 
I don't know. So transform is out of the question. That's not what we're going to be using. Instead, we are going to be using a thing called attribute math. So attributes are like additional variables that you introduce to geometry and you can use math on them. So you can multiply the attributes, you can uh, divide them and add them up and so on. So you can change the numbers for these attributes. And notice how I drag the point instance right next to group output. I will not be working with the boxes, but rather before I add the boxes, I will be working with the attributes of the points themselves, right? So every point receives an attribute and then that attribute translates into the box, into the scale or the rotation of the box. So it's a bit different from how you work with it in Grasshopper, but still somewhat useful, usable. Uh, the, the word is usable. Okay, so point distribute, uh, let's see, shift A, attribute, uh, let's go for attribute math, like that. So what kind of attribute can we work with? Well, there is position, right? So position is already existing attribute that you can uh, already uh, impose, and position is basically um, XYZ values according to the zero. Right, so this is zero, then one, two, three, four in X, and, and so on. Uh, so it's it's basically a number that's increasing as you move away from zero, zero, zero coordinates of the world. That's position attribute. Then you uh, don't, by the way, position, not location, which is awkward, but it is what it is. Then you have rotation attribute, of course. Um, straight up, rotation is rotation. And then you have scale attribute. And also what you can do is you can add more attributes. But just before we do that, let me just show you um, let me just show you how, how, I, um, how I would work with this. So let's say we want to scale all of these boxes down by, uh, by 90 percent. So down to 0.1 of the original size. I will add the attribute math node in between point distribute and point instance and type A and I will say that um, actually I want to multiply the attributes and I will multiply the scale by 0.1, right? So type A is going to be an attribute while type B is going to be a float number, just a number, right? So type A, I write scale, sorry, for attribute A, I write scale. For B, I write 0.1, so it, scale gets multiplied by 0.1, and what kind of result do I get? Scale. Again. Why are they gone now? This is weird. Mm. Okay, what if float? This float is 1. So now it works. Did it understand scale as one before? I think it understood scale, oh sorry, as zero before. So we multiplied zero by uh, 0 0.1 and we ended up with, uh, with zero. So it, uh, all of the boxes just scaled down to zero. Okay, fine. So I'm just, right now I'm just writing the scale for it and I'm just saying that um, scale should be 1 divide, uh, multiplied by 0 0.1 which is, you know, 10% as all of the boxes get uh, scaled down by, down to 10%, right? So that's nice. Okay, let's add more complexity to this or more control rather to this. So, just scaling it down is, is cool and all, but what if I want to, let's say, the closer the boxes are to the center point of this plane, the smaller they get, the further they are away, the larger they get. Well, for that, I can't just use a static number. I need to somehow react to the position of the boxes, right? So here, under float, uh, for type A under float, I will say, yeah, instead of float, uh, instead of, uh, yeah, a, a number one, 
uh, I will have an attribute and that attribute is going to be position. Right? So when we are near zero, position value is small and it gets multiplied by 0 0.1, so it gets even smaller. When we are away from zero, further away from zero, position value is large and the boxes get multiplied by it. Uh, that this, it also it gets multiplied by that. So it's it's basically uh, this is just a so, just soft softening of that effect. So 0 0.01 would r give us these values, which I think are fine. And I can start introducing the density. And this is by the way where Blender shines. I mean I can do 30 like th this amount of boxes and it, it doesn't even have a hiccup, it's fine. So this is uh, Grasshopper at this point would start choking up and this one is still uh, 60 frames per second, completely interactive. All right, so we have this going on, uh, 0 0.01, um, let's try 0 0.03, yeah maybe something like that is a bit nicer. Just you know to, to, to get some some cool cool effects. Um, let's see if we can do some more control. So first of all, I, I want to change the box uh, the boxes from cubes because they are overlapping a little bit too much. So I'll just take this box and I'll say S Z scale and Z. Uh, let's say five times to make it into this box, then I'll go to Object, um, Apply All Transforms. So now when I apply All Transforms, its center point moves back to 0, 0, 0, so I just need to go to Object again, set uh, Origin, Origin to Geometry, and now all is good again. Actually, maybe I should... Yeah, maybe the center point should be in the bottom, so I'll just select the box, um, hit tab to go to edit mode, hit 3 to go to surface edit mode, and here I will... I don't remember... Shift S? Whoops, nope, 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 nope. Shift S. Um, cursor to selected, like that get out of the edit mode by hitting tab, object, set origin, origin to 3D cursor. This is not important, but just something that um, that I like. Uh, I like to do, so all of my skyscrapers are in the same uh, height. Yeah, they start from the same height. Let's see it like that. Let me hide the cube, actually and shift s uh, cursor to world origin just to place the cursor back there <clears throat> okay so we have this going on which is great and we do have uh quite quite a bit of well not quite a bit of control but a little bit of control 0 0.02 maybe a little bit smaller and it starts looking looking quite nice right uh, so now let's introduce a little bit of um, dynamics here. So what I'm going to do is I'll add another attribute mesh component here. So shift A, search, uh, sorry, attribute math component, attribute math, <clears throat> like that, connected like so. And this time I'm going to say, hmm, what if Sorry, I'm 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 just thinking. What if we subtract What if we subtract uh a number hmm. 
I'm, I'm, I'm just thinking how to make these kind of wavy, wavy forms. Um, so first of all, how big is our our thing? It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so it's six here. Okay, so what if we have a float and it's, let's say, three? Let's try it in the middle, between zero and six. So it's, it's three, it's somewhere here. And attribute D is position, right? And then the result is also position. Does this work? No, it doesn't. Hmm. Sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm just, just thinking. Okay, so if this doesn't work, then what if we say that result is position 2, and then attribute here is position 2. Yeah, that works. Okay. So we have that working, but the problem now is that these get inverted. So the, the way this works is from a number, which is position, or, or rather it has a number, and then it removes a value, uh, a value of position from that like locked number and gives us position two, or, or we can just call this uh, custom, our custom attribute. And then it takes that custom attribute, multiplies it by 0 0.02 and translates it, translates it into scale. So there's like two, two map sequences involved and it's super hard to kind of clearly explain it. So hopefully you just kind of get it from, um, you know, for, from this visual here and, and just me messing around with it. If, by the way, if the number is zero and we remove, we always uh, subtract the position from zero, it's going to get, it's going to become upside down, right? But if the number is six, it's going to get inverted, right? So it's 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 a little bit it's a little bit weird how it works. Actually, maybe I should do it this way. It's going to be a little bit more clear. So um, right now I have the center point here in the bottom. Actually, I'm going to go to object, set origin, origin to geometry. I'm going to center it. Screw it. I'm going to center it. Hide the cube. Select the point cloud. And now I'm going to mess mess around with it. So when, when this number is zero and you remove position from zero, so for instance, let's just say this point right here, right? This guy right here. If you, it, it has like a number of um, 0 0.1 or, or something like that, right? If you, a, a position vector of 0 0.1. So from zero, if you remove 0 0.1, it's negative 0 0.1, and then it gets multiplied by 0 0.02, and you, thus you get the scale of it, right? Uh, so it's, let's say this doesn't even exist, right? So it's just negative 0 0.1. And for this guy, from zero, you remove, let, let's say the, the position of this guy is six. From zero, you remove six, so it's minus six, and that's, that becomes the scale, right? Minus six, so it becomes bigger, right? In inverted, but bigger. And since we have them all centered, it, it just kind of works. It doesn't matter if it's in the negative or in the positive. Uh, so this is how we are dealing with it. I think we could have added more math to that, but that, that's fine, that's fine. Okay, so now um, what I want to do is I want to automate this, right? This this pulsing effect. 
So I will use what, what, what's what's automated, you know, what the, what pulses, what sinus waves pulse. So I'll shift A, I'll go to utilities and I'll choose math. Math and here instead of add I will find sign. And for sign I know um, I know for sure that <clears throat> zero Okay, I don't know for sure. I don't remember. I think zero is one. If you convert it, zero uh, is is one. If you convert it to sine, and pi is also one. Pi divided by two is zero. We'll see. Either way. For now, let me just take that sine value and connect it to a to just see if it works and increase the. Keep increasing the uh, and decreasing the slider, and you can see it pulses. Okay, so it does work, but the problem is that the, the numbers are weird. So if value is zero, it's like that. If value is one, it's like that. If value is two, it's like that. Three, and then four, it will be done. So technically, I believe if value value is zero and value three point one four. Enter. Yes, they are exactly the same thing. 3.14 and 0. So 3.14 is pi, 0 is 0. Both result in this output being 0. So what we're going to do is we'll take this output and we'll add shift A, utilities, math. We will add one more math node here. And we will multiply the output by, I don't know, let's see, let's try 7. We do 7, and let's increase the number, so now it pulses like that. Oh, sorry, uh, that's, that's wrong, we're not multiplying it by 7, we're adding 7. So instead of adding, we choose multiply. There we go. So it becomes quite big. But that's fine, that's something we can fix. Here I'll just change this to 6. Okay, and now we need to actually have a, like a decent number slider here instead of... Um, instead of a sinus value. So I'm going to say, because I need to be able to lock or introduce keyframes at really precise moments. So I will use radiance for that. Let's, let's see if we have that one, radiance. We don't, shit. But wait, does the math node have it? Math? Yes, it does. Super. To radians. So we are going to be converting degrees to radians. That's excellent. So now I know for sure. Zero degrees is going to look like that. And 180 is going to look exactly the same way. But 90 is going to have a wave right at the end. Like going to the end. Which means, if I say... Yeah, which means we can already animate this, right? All right, so let, let's see. If at frame one or at frame zero, we have zero degrees, how do I add? Yeah, insert keyframe, right? So um, in, in the, can you actually see it? Yes, you can. In, in the timeline, I just move the slidey thingy to the zero. And I will right click on the degrees and insert keyframe and set them to zero here. And then let's say our end is going to be right at the end of this, um, this timeline, which is 250 degrees, uh, 250 frames. So for 250, I will change the degrees to 180 and hit I again. So notice how the keyframes are not showing up here. I think this is still not incorporated, but if I now move the 
the, 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 the timeline, it actually works, right? So let, now let me hit the spacebar and play it. And this is how it how it deals with that. Can we make this nicer? Units? No. Where, where, where is it? So under render settings, I think we can change the frame size to 60 to make it a bit nicer. Yay! Okay, so it works. Uh, we can still mess around with many things and, and, and so on, change, you know, the density of things, increase, decrease the density, look at it up close. Like that. Right? So this is how it, it looks like right now. Uh, this file together with the Blender file, uh, like, uh, yeah, th th this file is going to be available for, for Patreon supporters, by the way, if, if you, you know, if you can't follow, follow through, um, then you can just kind of support the channel and get the file, uh, and then just have it, I don't know. <laughs> it will only run on 2.92 though, so keep that in mind. Okay, so we have this, uh, we have this working. Let me pause this for a second um, and let's make it nicer. W what was that? What are these dimensions here? I don't even... I don't even... Okay. So now... Um, I guess one last thing that we can do is we can introduce chamfer to our cube, right? So all of these cubes are kind of... They, they have su super sharp corners. And let's just see how much we can push this before it starts breaking apart. So for this cube, I will add a modifier. Add modifier. Um, where is it? Bevel. There we go. Bevel modifier. I will increase the amount and introduce more like five segments. Shade smooth. Without any problems whatsoever. Just bevels. And works in. works like a champ. Cool, huh? <laughs> so speed-wise, this is way beyond Grasshopper. Like Grasshopper would choke up on this heavily. Um, it's somewhere in, in the lines of, of, of Houdini rather than, than Grasshopper, which is super. Um, Functionality-wise, it's still not there yet. I'm, I wouldn't be able to use this as a design tool. Uh, just for a few effects and so on, maybe, but for, for nothing else. Uh, but this is super exciting and this is so great to, to have one more program joining the family of parametric design and just being able to choose any kind of a... Um, just being able to choose a program that fits you for a certain work workflow is, is always great. Also, Blender is free, so just check it out. Right. I'll probably make more videos about this as the updates roll out and new functionalities increase, but for now, this is the most I could do with it. Okay. Hope you enjoyed this. I'll see you next time. Bye.